Ann Jones and Gan Shuan from the Union join us in studio for a discussion around new tobacco products and industry interference as it relates to tobacco control. Gan and Anne, thank you very much for joining us um, for a discussion on this topic. Gan, I'm going to start with you. Tell us first of all about some of the latest uh, challenges from the tobacco industry. Uh, Philip Morris funded tobacco control schemes, uh, e-cigarettes, etc. Uh, maybe I can start with the um, Philip Morris Funded Foundation. That's all right with you. Um, so if you look at the FCTC, which is the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, it made it very clear there we should stay away from the tobacco industry when it comes to tobacco control policy making. And that's why at this conference we had this policy that the tobacco industry and anyone affiliated with the tobacco industry should not be attending uh, this conference. And this year, we further extended the policy to include the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World. Um, this Foundation for a Smoke-Free World is just a repeat of tobacco industry um, strategy tactic in the past as a front group uh, to, um, to sell the uh, tobacco industry, to help tobacco industry sell their products and uh, promote uh, their image. And what impact is all of this having on tobacco control in general? It's the single greatest threat that uh, we face as people working in tobacco control trying to reduce the 7 million deaths a year caused by these products. Uh, we really have to uh, not trust them. There's no trust. There's very little trust left. Uh, uh, and this is because of their, uh, you know, the products they produce are uh, not only deceptive and misleading uh, in terms of their claims, but they have also uh, w have been well and truly proven to be lethal addictive products. Uh, and of course, these products are being spread around the world as part of their global strategy uh, to addict as many people as possible. And so the latest moves in terms of, you know, so-called uh, harm reduced products and the foundation are really part of their marketing campaign. I mean, this is all about uh, protecting their own profits and, uh, it, and in fact it's a really a response to the success so far of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control because we are seeing reductions in tobacco use. And so this is the industry reinventing uh, their products under another name and yet there is no evidence that these products are safe uh, uh, they're not um, in any way uh, products that we can trust and yet uh, we are still seeing these products being promoted in a number of countries, particularly low to middle income countries where the sorts of laws and regulations that should be in place are not yet in place. Can what are some of the most important tools in tobacco control today? Well, we have um, very good evidence that what kind of tools actually work and uh, WHO published um, a package of uh, effective uh, tobacco control measures uh, called uh, Empower, um, which is basically a set of um, uh, evidence-based uh, effective tobacco control measures that have been applied around the world. And they are hugely, hugely effective. We've made uh, quite a lot of progress in some areas like smoke-free, TAPS ban, and uh, graphic health warnings but we have made um, relatively little progress in raising tax. So that's why we are really trying to focus on raising tax uh, in the next few years. Final question for you, Anne. What, can the, what does the union do? What can the union do to clarify the situation to governments and at the same time support them? Well, we work with governments um, and civil society, and I think there's two key messages from us. And one is that we need to stop tobacco industry interference in public health. Uh, and we need to support governments in raising tobacco taxes uh, the, for the simple reason that most uh, taxes on tobacco are still very low and tobacco is cheap, contributing to the burden of disease that we are seeing around the world, the 7 million deaths a year. And of course here in Africa, tobacco use is going to grow 40%. Uh, and that, that's a huge uh, burden that uh, they're, they're looking at and they have to face. Uh, so if we help and work with governments, to raise tobacco tax, we would see then that there will be extra funding through this fiscal policy to pay for the health programs that can be used to uh, save lives, reduce the burden uh, of disease and also help governments raise a lot more revenue for all of their programs. Right, Anne, Anne, thank you very much for your time.